So, welcome now to the part we call introduction. We will talk about product culture, about uh, the framework, product management 3.0, and about how we compare the GPML model with the standards. So, <laughs> what is product culture? We call it the business-driven product culture. And a way to see how an uh, organization or a company compares to or have a good uh, product culture. We can see this over these six signs. Uh, and the first sign, they are not in particular in any priority order, but the first sign we have here we call business driven product management. What does that mean? Well, it's actually especially about product portfolio management. So an organization or a company that have a good business driven product management means that they are good in product portfolio management. They are good in choosing the right products to do with the right scope and with the right focus to really create the most possible benefits and value for the company. So the right product portfolio continuously being supervised and improved uh, uh, all, over, uh, all the time. Then the second one, value creation and benefits gener generation. What does that mean? Well, it's actually about the old famous time, cost and quality. Are we good in, in our particular projects and program to, uh, programs to continuously create a better, most possible value and benefits both for the customer and for ourselves? Here it can depend totally, of course, which type of projects we're talking about. Are we talking about customer projects, and maybe internal projects, improvement projects, or product development projects? So depending on the type, and the value we are to create is different. But we need to have this focus all the time and ensure we then create the best possible value and benefits. So meaning then that we are on time, we deliver within budget, we deliver what the customer expects, and that we actually also are uh, being profitable in the case we measure that one. <laughs> The third sign that uh, shows uh, good product culture is about a common way of working. Do we have a common tools? Do we have common models or uh, methodologies how we work? So here, for example, the GPMM model can help a lot to strengthen this one. Actually, GPMM can help on the other uh, signs also, but this is a very obvious one that to ensure we have a common way of working in the products and the programs with the portfolio and with the PMO also. And as you know, typically in, uh, in organizations that manage a lot of projects, we have a matrix organization. And since we have a matrix organization, we need to have very clear roles and responsibilities. The role of the project manager, the resource owner, the receiver of the projects, the people working in the project, the sponsor, etc. The, the, the communication and interworking between all these roles must be very clear to ensure the best profit, profitable and uh, best possible product performance. We look into that uh, now in, the, in, the, in this particular course, course quite a lot. Then we also have the soft part. Are we good in leadership? Uh, are, we, are we good in, in motivating our employees? We believe that it's much more likely that the products will be successful if the product, uh, the product members, everyone working in the product and around the products are motivated and uh, uh, and likes to work here in the product because then the performance from each individual and each team, uh, each uh, key person here, key stakeholder, uh, uh, will be much better if they are happy. So, so leadership, good way of managing it, is very important. Finally, last but not least, uh, we have continuous learning of the right competence. We have to ensure that we continuously improve competence as a part of the product management work we do also. So we. Um, uh, and ensure that we have the right people available when a product starts, during the product, that we create competence during the product, and we make use of that competence also afterwards. So we have mechanisms and way of working to continuously ensure learning in our, our organization. And these signs, that you can be analyzed, you can just use what I just told you and think of yourself or your own organization, do you have this? Or where are your weaker points or your stronger points? We could help you with a more uh, deep analysis, analysis of this, but uh, you can also do a lot of it yourself. And to help here also, let's say that you want to improve your product culture. 
So you want, as you can see, to get to this point with a business-driven product culture. How can we get there? Uh, our proposal is to get them to, to really improve them on these six signs I just mentioned, is to use this product management 3.0 framework, which is built up of five building blocks. We have the four on top here, and then one uh, supporting the other ones. So as a brief description of these five building blocks, then we have product portfolio management. We need to be good in product portfolio management, have good governance, and show we, as I just said, are good in uh, choosing the right products, etc. Good at risk management on, on portfolio level, good in program management, and that we continuously ensure uh, that we also introduce new inventions, uh, that we are creative in the company, and that th those new ideas, new, uh, new inventions, new products are coming into uh, as a part of the portfolio also continuously. So we have a good, what we call a good demand management at the same time. Then a common way of working, as I said, we need to have uh, methodologies and tools for that, considering all types of products. They could be structured, as we say, the, the waterfall product, so, but they could also be agile, fully agile, and they could be hybrid products. We'll also talk more about that in, in other courses in this series of, of courses. We could then have the model, as I said, the GPM models as a good support here, and we support all these types of products. Business analysis is an important concept here, so to ensure that we define very well the scope of the project, and that we understand well the requirements common tools, as I said, and that we continue to also work with improvements in our way of working. The third block is about competence and organization, so that we have well-defined roles, uh, we have the product manager uh, role as such, which is one of the, of course, key roles here. With good product managers, it's much more likely in general that uh, you will have a successful uh, management of your products in the organization that we have get good product performance just thanks to very good product managers so we need to work with that role and ensure that we have good product managers with the right skills in all senses technical leadership etc and then that we have ensure as i also just said continuous learning as a part of the projects <coughs> The fourth block, continuous transformation or continuous change. We have to have the mechanism in place in our company that to ensure that we continuously transform ourselves, continuously improve uh, uh, and change into the better. We live in, a, live in a very fast world nowadays. Change, changes are coming all the time, new competitors, new products, etc. So we need to use the best possible project management to ensure that we follow these trends and adapt to these trends. So we are good in then leading change, managing change, and that we are using then the project and program management, very important in this case, to ensure this change continuously. Here as a support, we also, uh, you can also use GPMM then, a, a version of the GPMM uh, uh, focused on transformation and change. And finally, we have the fifth block, the one here at the bottom which is a PMO. It is a model that we also have here to the right, where you can see these seven different parts of the PMO model. Uh, but we need PMOs. Depending on the size of the organization, it could be one PMO, but it could also be many PMOs out in the organization if it's a big company. Typically, globally big companies, international companies have many PMOs. So the PM, one of the important things that the PMO could be responsible for is to ensure that these other four building blocks actually are being executed and performed in a good way. And as a part then to build up a PMO and define the responsibility of a PMO, we have a model we call PMO 3.0, which is also part of the GPM model, that we also have a specific course about uh, uh, as uh, one of the modules here in this series of courses. So, that was it. This is what we call then the Product Management 3.0 framework. And it can really be a very good help to you. That's why you also see this tool up here, toolbox up here, to, uh, that since you can use it as a tool to be able to uh, improve uh, in, in, uh, in your daily work. <laughs>